First things first, Adrian, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> it's very good to hear. Before we jump into the new record, I'd like to start when you started songwriting. Do you remember what compelled you to write your first songs? Mm. I think when I was a child, I had an early onset of awareness of myself from outside of myself. Mm -hmm. And I've always felt like I was in a dream and like I was watching everything from, from I was watching the dream happening and um, I just became very aware of my finite physical form right. and a lot of questions and curiosity. I just mostly had curiosity. And I think that's what um, brought me to writing songs. And you were quite young at the, uh, this time. And what role did music, because your father was a musician, what role did music play for you before you started writing songs yourself? Hmm. Music just calmed me down. Mm. Yeah. And then once you start writing, did that effect kind of change or was it, was it even uh, strengthened? Um, it pretty much remained that. Okay. Like when I'm writing or when I'm playing guitar, it brings, brings me a lot of, probably the deepest sense of stillness. Mm -hmm that I get from anything, it, it, it brings me to, a, to some sort of center. Okay. So you mentioned a, a sense of stillness in you um, through music and through, I suppose, being creative. Can you kind of conjure up that feeling or that, that sense at any point in time and just start writing or do you have to be in a certain mindset to, to create? Mm. It's very fluid. Mm. Yeah, I slip in and out of that form of connectedness. I like to be able to choose when I feel still and at peace. But um, yeah, no, I. I'm just figuring this out as I'm talking about it. Um, sometimes when I pick up the guitar or I start to write, I feel very unsettled. So usually it's out of a need for feeling connected to my own spirit. And um, sometimes there's room for that and sometimes there isn't. Mm. Because I also slip into a very vulnerable place when I'm writing. And so, yeah, my external environment is always shifting and changing. Mm -hmm. And I've been living on the road for the last three and a half years. Mm. But even before being on the road, I was on the road in a sense. I moved around a lot as a kid. And also, um, yeah, I just I feel like there's been this thread of transience throughout mm. my life. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure what I would do or what my outlet would be if it wasn't music. Mm. Well, but it's, you mentioned something interesting because, like you say, you've moved around quite a bit when you were younger as well. Do you have a sense or, or do you want a sense of stability or do you like kind of the, the, the touring lifestyle, if you, if you can call it that, the, the kind of the traveling? Well, I've had to find a sense of stability within the travel, mm. traveling lifestyle. Um, mm. And I do, I do hunger for a groundedness that, that is hard to find amidst all of that movement. Mm. And I do sometimes want uh, a home, a deeper, like a, a physical home, mm. um, or, or like a, yeah, 
but I think I've had to find a home within all of the shifts of scenery and place and people. It's, it's forced me to find, find that in myself, and it's an ongoing journey. Because I can imagine, and like you say, even from, a, from an early age, you were very self-reflective and kind of looking at you from the outside. And doing this through songwriting and, and delving into yourself and reflecting on yourself, I can imagine that can be quite, uh, at times, confronting, but other, I mean, liberating, I suppose, in a way as well, but confronting and it brings with it all these things. So, so how do you experience that? Is, is it a... I don't know how to describe this, but is it, is it a, a fun thing to do, for, for lack of a better word? Sometimes it's really not fun. <laughs> um, sometimes it feels a bit chaotic mm. because I'm venturing into the chaos of my own psyche all the time mm. and and also just the energetic just the field of energy that's everywhere constantly mm. through nature, through people. Um, yeah, see, <laughs> <laughs> there's, um, what's, what's fun? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a <laughs> weird word, so I, I can figure out something, so, but, but, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not trying no, no. to criticize the question, <laughs> I'm actually just wondering to myself, well, Playing is fun, mm. and as I'm a musician, I play music, and sometimes I take it too seriously, and then I have to remind myself that it's essentially play, mm. and and so there is so much fun and enjoyment to be had there, and um, so there's all these different layers of it. When I'm just playing, oh yeah, it's full of joy, and I feel a lot of joy, and the band and I, my bandmates, Max, James, and Buck, we all, mm. we have a lot of fun <laughs> creating and making music and being in that space. And um, and then there's also a lot of challenge and struggle too with being on the road and communicating mm. and working through our relationships with each other and working through our relationships with our art form. Because we are always striving to get to a place of just to get closer mm. to a clearer translation of the things that we have within us to express, the things that are flowing through. I feel like music is this portal or this bridge from the tangible, physical, material, seeable, experienceable <laughs> realm into the ethereal, mm. like, intangible, um, place and that is it's interesting that we're using things that are quantifiable and measurable in order to express something that just isn't and that's what's so interesting about it and so endless it's just this endless journey of learning mm. getting to play music and to write and to also just be alive I, f I find it very very interesting because I've thought about kind of what I do uh, in terms of I have to kind of <coughs> almost analytically ask, ask you questions about something that's very visceral, very uh, based on emotion and, and <coughs> I mean, I can assume, which, which is what a lot of musicians say as well, they, they, it's difficult to talk about what they're doing because that's why the music is there. Mm. But, uh, what I find interesting then is because you've written for, from an early age and you write for, um, uh, for yourself and then for the band as well, this continuous kind of... Uh, how, how does that work creatively? Do you just continuously feel the need to write or does it come out of you, like you mentioned, kind of almost subconsciously? Mm -hmm.
I think it's just a decision. Mm. There's this constant river of of energy, and we can just. I think it's just like choosing to to reach dip into the river and feel let the feel the water flowing, or like it's just a river. It's always there, and it's always around, and and if I'm connected to it or not connected to it. It doesn't mean that it, uh, the river never disappears. Mm -hmm. It's always it's always there. So it's usually something within myself that keeps me from being in that flow, I guess. And hmm, it yeah. Can you say the question one more time? Well, it was a, even as I was saying, it made me kind of confused as well. So. <laughs> Um, but more of a, in a sense, look, this is a very, very simple, simplistic way of asking the same thing, but um, what drives you? What drives me? There isn't, there isn't one pointed idea that drives me. It changes all the time mm -hmm. as I grow and as I experience new layers of life. Um, what what drives me? Well, I feel there's this pulling and this pushing simultaneously happening, and it's from birth to death. And I suppose you could be born and you could just never do anything and not put any effort into a forward motion <clears throat> and just exist, and you would still end up somewhere. You would still end up dead. <laughs> I mean, these are the only things we know. I guess it's a bit morbid, but mm. I think about it a lot. How the only, some of the only things we, we know for certain is that we were born from somewhere and we die into, into something, into some place or into some form or into nothingness. We don't really quite know. Sure. So, I mean, what drives me is just constantly coming into awareness that I'm alive. Mm. And in the times that I'm not aware of being alive and aware of my existence, when I slip into like some, when I slip into unconsciousness, I suppose that's when I feel most disconnected from any mm. form of drive. Okay. I just feel like I'm sort of floating in this numbness or with this kind of veil over me. And then I'll come back into consciousness and awareness that I exist and that, that so much exists. And there's so many textures and colors and shapes and energies and ideas and so much mystery, so much mystery. Mm. And that <laughs> drives me. I guess I just have this force that feels like to be alive, to be alive and to really be awake in, 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 in existence and to be, it, I suppose, just staying awake mm. is, I still don't know, I don't know how to answer that question. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult one because that's, that's one I, I think about a lot, that's why I, tend to ask other people to see if I can get closer to an answer. Um, but in terms of uh, what you do then in, in, in this music industry and, and making records, and you mentioned kind of you, as a band, as a collective, you, you try to, to always grow and to, to get closer to that, uh, I don't know, I can't remember what you said exactly, but kind of that sense of uh, freedom, I suppose. When you start a new album like now, and then especially considering how well the, the two before were received, how do you kind of ignore all that, that whole world that, that's talking about it and just concentrate on, on what you're doing? Or do you, or can you? Yeah, it's difficult. It's, um, well, the the band and I have made a conscious, make conscious decisions all the time towards finding a level of neutrality 
um, in the face of criticism, whether it be negative or positive criticism. And I think that it's, I've seen, I've seen artists sort of deteriorate under the pressure of success or like growing recognition and because I think it's kind of a pressurized system if you feed into if you experience all of the all of the external projections and reflections as truth if you if you allow so many voices in it can be very dizzying I think and I think that a lot of artists and musicians tend to be deeply empathetic and that's why they're able to write about things in the world and write about themselves and write about these like put these feel put these feelings into form mm -hmm. it's because of that because they're able to absorb and collect so much of the energy that's around them and so it's a tricky thing to try and maintain contact with your original tender beating heart which is the reason why you started making art or music in the first place to try and balance that with having to simultaneously build sort of a defense sure. or like walls um, okay so you start out with this like this soft sort of tender open living breathing relationship with yourself and and with the world around you and the way that you're experiencing it and the the atmosphere that you that I I'll speak for myself the atmosphere that I need in order to create is it has to feel it has to feel safe and it has to feel like it nurtures this energy and this creative force mm. and when you step into the sort of vortex of the machinery of actually making a career mm. in this world, this paradigm that we're in, and like considering things like growing an audience and building a team and making it somehow sustainable and like um, um, building resources and, and all of this, it also comes along with so many different types of pressure, so many different thoughts and and so many so many projections and so many crossroads and all of this seems to in different moments threaten the sort of sanctuary mm. womb atmosphere which that very tender uh, mm -hmm. creative energy thrives in right. and so yeah so to preserve that space is 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 can be challenging mm -hmm. as you move through and as, as things change. And so I'm just trying to figure it out and I'm wondering, can one navigate this landscape and maintain total connectedness with their original mm -hmm. spirit and not become hardened and not build up so many layers and so many walls that eventually they're inaccessible Right. Can can one somehow soften into soften into that stream of stimulus stimulus and preserve that vital 
um, source mm. that is the is the whole reason why yeah why why you make music in first place <clears throat> yeah that why did that feel that felt so challenging <laughs> I'm sorry. there's I, I, probably I, I, such a simple way of saying yeah but I, I, it's my fault as well i tend to be a bit vague in some, in the way i ask questions i suppose no you're it's you're fine it's just <clears throat> yeah but then uh, how, how important and uh, with the rest of the band as well but uh, obviously you started your own uh, musical journey very early on you went to berkeley uh studied guitar i believe um how important for you what was it then with with what you just said to meet somebody like uh buck and to, to kind of have that connection with and you don't in a sense do it together right well i feel with I always had a sense that I wanted to be part of a bigger mm. picture. I wanted to be just a, a smaller part of a, of a of something bigger than myself. And so I really, I always wanted to be in a band okay. rather than just doing, pushing like a solo career or a project solely. Um, <clears throat> and I think the importance of that for me is just this I don't know, on a subconscious level, I think I wanted to keep myself in check. I think I wanted to surround myself with people who would we would truly know each other. We would truly challenge each other every step of the way. We would be mirrors for each other. I think that like in in choosing each other, and I'm speaking about the whole band, about Buck, mm -hmm. about Max, about James, I think in choosing to work with each other, we all were searching for the same thing, mm. which is why we're able to be on this journey together, which is just to dive deeper into our creativity and to travel and to share with the world and also to um, to get to get closer to ourselves and I, I found it, I don't know what it would be like to just be doing it alone. Like, mm. I can't even imagine that now. Okay. Um, so meeting Buck when I moved to New York was, it felt really right that we would form, that we would start collaborating and um, begin the journey of sh of sharing creatively and then sort of, you know, we, we got this RV and we were just... I was waitressing in New York City. Mm. We were both working jobs in New York City, saved up money and booked our own tours and we'd go out on the road and then come back and save up more money. And, and then we met <clears throat> Max and James. And um, yeah, and it just felt really right. Um, UFOF, I, mm. I kind of looked up the acronym and I found uniocular fields of fixation. I, I'm not, <laughs> I don't think that's uh, where it's from, but uniocular uniocular field. fields of fixation. So that's something to do with your eyes, <clears throat> and I think depth perception or something like that. <laughs> but I, I'm guessing that's not where where the title comes from. So when was was this idea of of a UFOF born? That is so cool. Can I say that you looked up the acronym? Yeah, that, I, that, it, I thought maybe it stood for something. Well, I, I'd never heard that before, and, and I was just taking that in because I don't think it's, uh, well, it must be somehow synchronistic. It must be, it, it must, it means something. That's cool. Um, UFOF, yeah, it's like UFO, Unidentified Flying Object, mm -hmm. Friend. Okay. At least that's what the intention was. But also, I suppose it means uniocular fields of fixation. <laughs> UFOF is a song on the record. So does that song hold any special significance in that way? <clears throat> well, I think we chose that as the title because it sort of sums up most of the breadth of the record. Mm. Um, in that it's suggesting the idea of making friends with the unknown, mm -hmm. making friends with the mystery, and removing the separateness and the fear that comes with alienating 
other people or alienating um, parts of yourself mm. from mm. yourself or um, maybe well the, well the song UFOF is like an apocalyptic sort of story about being so curious and so intrigued from an early age about about extraterrestrials landing on earth and like watching for them and the magic that they represent and the 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 feeling of all that is beyond somehow to have contact with that would be so incredible mm. and also it's I remember being afraid of that as well. I remember being afraid of if aliens land or invade or <laughs> whatever. Um, <clears throat> but as I grew older, I started also imagining what would be even more s scary would be if they decided not to land on Earth or not to enter Earth maybe, um, because we'd created such a hostile and toxic, polluted environment and their systems wouldn't be able to function here, it'd be too dangerous, mm. or... <clears throat> um, so, I thought... I think, I think also, metaphorically, it's like... There's all, these, there's all these borders and constructs and things that we've created to keep ourselves separate from each other, and to stew in our ideas about about the differences that that could threaten or harm us mm. in the other and and so um, we alienate um, we we alienate other people <clears throat> and um, in doing this I think we create a opposition mm. and 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 we are potentially and war and we're you know potentially missing out on the higher forces that we that would be available to us or that we have access to mm -hmm. in what in the connectedness and the uni unification of the of, of the whole earth as one organism mm. and all beings and it's sort of just it's a song from the perspective of having missed that boat <laughs> yeah finally then you mentioned that connectiveness and <clears throat> I suppose well maybe not I'm, I'm not a musician so I wouldn't know but when you, when you make music you, part of it is it a part of it is kind of for it to be shared, right? All right. Have, uh, how have you seen that kind of the, the connection? Because obviously, I'm, I'm sure you've gotten great comments from people about the music that you make and people being able to connect to what you sing, what you write, the music. Um, so what role does that play for you, the connecting with the people who would or could listen to you? Mm. Well, I wonder what it would be like to make music and to never share it with anybody. Or to make any form of art and to never share it. And I think, I think that... I think I'd still be making it even if I, if I wasn't able to share with anybody. But it would be very different. <clears throat> In what way? Mm. Because I think I've, I've developed as a writer and as an artist through the um, the ex the exchange is is an important part of what I do mm. and what I think the band does, and I do consider the audience and I do care about what I'm putting out into the world and how it's affecting other people. And when I'm writing and when I'm creating, I try to keep out of this. I, I don't, 
I'm not consciously thinking about, okay, I'm making this for other people. I'm, I'm trying to just create without judgment and criticism in myself. And then afterwards I can look at it and go, okay, is this something I want to share? Or maybe I need, if I am sharing this, like maybe I've been too specific here with my own personal stuff and it doesn't leave enough room for other people to inhabit it. Mm -hmm. I like to leave room for people to inhabit the space of the songs with their own meanings. And um, so in that sense, I feel like my writing has developed through that lens. I feel like, I, and I don't know how I would have developed as a writer, as, a, as an artist, if I'd never been, mm -hmm. if that didn't exist. Right. So I'm not sure how it would be different, but I imagine it would be different. Because, yeah, because actually the audience, the listeners, help me to reflect in, in a specific way. They help me to, to grow and to change as an artist. Yeah, and I think that's what's so neat is, like when I have a new song, I'm not sure if it's any good until I've played it for an audience. Mm. And it's not because of verbal validation, it's because of a feeling. And I can always feel if it's connecting or not. And, but I suppose if I'm really in tune, I can feel it, if it connects with me deeply before I even bring it into an audience. But generally after we've been playing songs for some time, they change. They're like, they're not ours anymore. Mm. And they become, they just become these vessels for who, who, for anyone to, to inhabit. Very last thing then, because um, I'm not sure how much you've played the, the new songs yet for people, but what, what is your sense of how, how people perceive it? The new songs? Mm. It's hard to say, yeah, because no one's heard it yet. Oh, so, so you haven't played them live, or? I've played a few. Of the, we've played a few of the songs live, but um, for the record itself, there's mo most of the songs we haven't played. Mm, okay. Um, and I guess the ones we have played, they've stuck. Yeah, they've. Mm. I don't really know. I guess I just, at the end of the day, I just know how I perceive, how I experience sure. it. Yeah. Fair enough. Adrienne, thank you very much for your time. Thanks.